Walking desks are a really good way to stay fit while you work. Walking while you work increases endorphins and blood flow, which increases energy throughout the day. You'll need less caffeine to stay alert. You'll maintain a consistency of energy and alertness. Of course, you can lose weight. A typical walking day for me is around 15,000 steps per day, which is 5,000 steps more than the CDC recommend. And that's just by walking anywhere between one and three miles per hour which can be very sustainable and maintainable without causing instability at the mouse and keyboard. At that amount of steps or mileage, you may be able to do away with a gym membership entirely. I personally don't go to the gym anymore because of how many steps I get in. That saves me a lot of time and money, say $30 per month of a gym membership, but most importantly is the time factor. But the most important point is the positive impact walking desks has on your work life. My concentration, energy, and mood is significantly improved since I started walking. And as somebody with ADHD, this has been the single biggest boon besides medication in mitigating my ADHD symptoms. Walking just occupies that jitters part of your brain that craves motion, similar to a fidget spinner. So there are a ton of benefits to implementing a walking desk in your life. But today I'm going to compare various walking pads or treadmills, and I'm going to land on two specific ones the EgoFit Comfort Deck M2 and the Urevo treadmill. In a recent video, I actually recommended the Go Youth treadmill, and that is still an absolutely fantastic treadmill. I worked full time on that thing for two years straight, so some 40 hours per week for two full years before selling it on Facebook Marketplace in working condition, so it never even broke. So I stand by my take on the quality of that device, but after posting that video, I got a lot of engagement and comments and conversations that steered me towards some alternatives that were very popular in the community, a lot of research-driven decisions in the design of various treadmills. So the primary treadmill that I want to recommend is called the EgoFit Comfort Deck M2, and that is my new walking pad. This is $500 on their website. You can't get it on Amazon, at least not yet. They do have a version on Amazon, their prior iteration called the M1 Pro, but I recommend getting the M2 the upgraded model because what's unique about the ego fit is that it has a hard set 3% incline and there has been a lot of research into knee health for walking and running in sports medicine and the consensus tends to be that 3% is the ideal incline for optimal knee health no more no less so most walking pads including the go youth have a 0% incline they're flat and it turns out that that can be quite hard on your knees and indeed after walking for two years on that thing, I started to develop knee issues, which is why I chose to switch. Now, there are other treadmills which have either adjustable inclines or hard set inclines, but this is the only one with a hard set 3% incline, basically forcing you into the knee health optimum regime. The other thing that's unique about the Ego Fits is this honeycomb mesh shock absorption system where the whole walking pad compresses with each down step and that compression is at different levels across the walking pad. So on the part where your foot comes down the hardest is the most compressible through this honeycomb technology. And the part where you lift your foot up where you need some leverage is the hardest so that you're not sort of fighting against soft push off. Another reason I like the Ego Fit is that the side rails on the left and right of the belt are low profile, practically non-existent. And this lets you get your lubing tube in under the belt very easily. It's recommended that every 50 hours of walking, you should apply silicon lube under the belt in a zigzag pattern, distributed fairly evenly under the belt on both sides. And then you run the treadmill at one mile an hour for some minutes just to distribute the lube. And this reduces heat buildup on the walking pad, which heat buildup would be transferred to the motor, which would cause degradation of the motor and thus the whole treadmill. And so having owned a Go Youth with high profile side rails where you have to pinch the belt up, hold it up and apply the lube under the belt, it was extremely difficult to get the lube under that belt evenly. And the amount of pinch and pull I had to exert ended up causing belt drift fairly frequently that, that I had to fix by adjusting the belt tightness on either side with an Allen wrench. The next point is that the Ego Fit has a 2.5 horsepower motor, which is relatively high for budget treadmills. A higher horsepower motor reduces the overall noise of the treadmill when you're walking and increases the longevity of the device. If you're going faster than motors, horsepower is optimally equipped to handle, then you're putting strain on the motor. So this has a very high horsepower rating compared to most budget treadmills. And since the maximum speed it can go is 3.1 miles per hour, 
it's contained well within what is healthy for the motor for long-term usage. The next point is that the maximum weight capacity is 245 pounds. I myself am 220 pounds, which is the maximum limit of the Go Youth. Bless the Go Youth for having been able to withstand its maximum capacity by me for two straight years of full-time work. By upgrading to the Ego Fit, I am well within its maximum weight bounds. The 245 and sometimes 265 pound maximum is very rare amongst the budget treadmills. You don't really start pushing those limits until you start going into the lifespans which typically have like a 300 or 400 pound maximum. Another big benefit of the Ego Fit is that it has a very short depth of walking area. And that means it takes up significantly less space than the average treadmill in your living area. So the treadmill itself protrudes from your desk a lot less than the average treadmill. Now, you may be concerned about having a long walking stride and if that would limit a natural gait, it does not. I have been walking on this for a while now and I do a full stride. I'm six foot two, so I'm in the sort of upper range of strides, and it does not limit my stride whatsoever. They have optimized the stride in a very interesting way. The front plate of the treadmill, which is usually a large area that you don't want your foot to touch, is lowered. They call this below the sink or something like that, is lowered so that your foot can go over the treadmill front in a way. You can overstep the belt without any issues. And I find that my stride extends all the way to the back before I push off. And I've never felt limited how long my strides need to be. So for me, the Ego Fit Comfort Deck M2 is really the best treadmill. It hits all the points, really pushing into the upper case on the quality side of things, such as the motor's horsepower and the maximum weight capacity and the quality of the device. If you look at the ratings on Amazon for the M1, you can see that it has very high ratings and a very good distribution of those high ratings. One thing I always look for when I'm reviewing products is how much of a one-star skew exists for an otherwise highly rated product. So if something has like, let's say a four or a 4.5 star rating, but then you hover over the star rating widget on Amazon and you see that a huge chunk of that is one stars, then either you may be looking at fake ratings, which you can look into via a Chrome extension called Fake Spot, and it will tell you using machine learning whether the thing is likely to be fake ratings or not or simply that there are a lot of duds. And even if those don't cover the majority of use cases, it's worth consideration. And the one that really comes to my mind there in those in the strong one-star skew is Go Plus, one of the most popular purchases for treadmill desk walking pads and the walking pad, literally the word walking pad without a space between. Those two products are very popular in this space and both of them have very strong one-star skews. And if you look into those one-star reviews, a lot of them, really boil down to quality issues, the thing breaking down in short order, or belt drift that develops right out the gate. It's a common thing to deal with as a maintenance task for treadmills, but some of the lower quality treadmills start getting belt drift right out the gate, whereas some of the higher quality ones don't develop belt drift until months or years down the line. So the Ego Fit has really strong ratings with a very low one-star skew, implying to me that it's just a very high quality device. And having been using this for a while now, it's just solid and comfortable, and it's not making any sort of odd noises, clinks and clanks that some people experience with the different lower quality treadmills. So I can attest to the quality that you see in the reviews on Amazon. And one final cool note is that it is quiet. I'm walking on it as I record this. So you should be able to pick up the sound. You may be able to pick up hints of it, but it's not intrusive. So for those Zoom and Google Hangouts meetings for work and stuff, they're, they're really not gonna notice the sound of the treadmills. My coworkers also own Ego Fits and I can't hear them from their side of things either. Now there's tiny downsides that I've picked up since owning this thing. One is that the controller doesn't have a pause button. So if you go grab a glass of water and come back, you have to dial the speed all the way back up to where you left it. So you have to click play and then you have to click plus until you get back to the speed that you like. So there's no sort of like profiles or memory or, or even just pause and resume. You have to stop and start from scratch. That's a big pain in the butt. The other thing I'm a little concerned about is that the treadmill doesn't have easy access to the motor. And if you have pets or a very dusty place, you typically want access so you can vacuum out the dust or hair from the motor to prevent degradation. But the fact that this is sort of closed off maybe means that it's gonna be getting less of that dust and hair in there in the first place. So that's my number one recommendation, Ego Fit Comfort Deck M2. You can only buy it on their website right now, whereas you can buy the M1 Pro on Amazon. And I hope that they move this to Amazon eventually. It looks like it was released late 2023, so maybe they're just working on that. 
the reason I hope you could do it on Amazon is firstly that you can like trust your purchase well enough and that you can return it within a window and all that stuff. But the biggest thing is the insurance policy. I've used insurance policies on budget treadmills in the past, the Assurian insurance policy, and it was really good. And those are like the extended ones that last two or three years. They're, they're worth buying, in my opinion, and not being able to get that depending on EgoFit's standard one-year warranty makes me a little bit nervous. But so far, based on the quality of the treadmill itself, I'm okay with the one-year warranty. I didn't have to use it on the Go Youth, which is an even cheaper device. So if you wanted to stick to Amazon, then you can get their older product, which is the M1 Pro. But I don't recommend it because it has a hard set 5% incline. And one of the biggest, if not the biggest contributor to optimal knee health for these treadmills is the incline. You want it to be exactly 3%. So if it's not a hard set 3% incline, like the M2 is, then you'll want at least to be able to adjust it yourself, like the Urevo, which we'll be talking about in a bit, so that you can set it at 3% yourself. The M1 Pro is 5% hard set. And so that's not as optimal for knee health as the M2. It's probably better than a flat surface, like most standard treadmills, but not as good as it can be. And it's really that 3% incline that makes this video really easy to boil down to two recommendations. So the next recommendation is Urevo. And this has been really popular among people who have interacted with me through comments or emails and whatnot. One thing is that it is really cheap. I think Urevo might be one of, if not the cheapest of the decent quality treadmills out there. They have one as low as $200. They have various models. So you'll have to go to their Amazon store page and find one that fits within your budget. And similar to the EgoFit's star rating distribution, the, the reviews indicate actually really high quality treadmills, even for being such a budget treadmill. I was actually very surprised at how decent those review distributions appear to be. The Urevo seem to be very popular among people who end up doing a big deep dive in research and research and reaching out to me. Most of the Urevos let you set an incline. So if you order that, then you can set the incline to 3% and leave it there. So I think the decision is really easy and clear to make. If you have the budget for a $500 walking pad and you're okay buying off of a website, not Amazon, and you're okay with a one-year warranty, then buy the EgoFit Comfort Deck M2. If that sort of decision tree questionnaire fails, then you go with your Evo. As for the other devices, like I said, Go Plus and Walking Pad they just seem to have a lot of quality concerns in the reviews on Amazon. And I see a lot of complaints about them on Reddit's treadmills and walking desks subreddits. I've been walking for two years and kind of just keeping my ear to the ground on all of these products. And I just see that those two get the most complaints. And then of course, there's a whole bunch of other budget treadmills out there. But these are the five that I really see discussed the most in this space. That is EgoFit, Urevo, Go Youth, Go Plus, and Walking Pad. The last thing to mention are the quote unquote quality treadmills. These include Lifespan and iMover, but especially Lifespan. And Lifespan has three models, TR1000, TR1200, and TR5000. And these range between $1,600 and $2,200. The only reason I'd ever recommend these treadmills is, is if you're above the weight 245 pounds, because the maximum weight capacity at the budget level is 245 slash 265. And the maximum weight capacity of the lifespan is 400 pounds. So there's a huge jump there. Now that would really be the only reason I'd recommend a lifespan. You'll see lifespans being recommended a lot as the quality pick on various forums, Reddit and whatnot. But I think that the budget picks quality has improved so significantly that something like an ego fit, I truly don't think is going to be much worse, if worse at all, than a lifespan in terms of quality. They'll both need the same kinds of maintenance with belt drift and underbelt lubing. They both might need some servicing over the years. And as long as you have a good warranty, there's nothing to worry about in the first place. But with the ego fit being $500, which is already expensive in terms of the budget picks, and the lifespan's best one being $2,200, that price jump is so severe that it better be that much better in terms of quality. And I just don't see that being the case from my research. And in fact, I have used the lifespan TR5000. I use that at an office. There's no real way to know how much higher quality it may be than the budget picks, except for over a very long period of time when maybe the motor starts going out. I don't think it's objectively the quality choice. And for my part, even if I was given the option of EgoFit versus Lifespan, I'd still pick EgoFit because of the shock absorption and the 3% incline of the EgoFit. So it's not just about the theoretical quality difference of the hardware. There are other factors to consider. 
especially for very long-term use if you're going to be using this as your daily driver at your full-time job. So let's make the choice really simple. Are you over 245 pounds? If yes, get a Lifespan TR5000. Are you okay buying something off of Amazon and without an extended warranty? If yes, get an EgoFit Comfort Deck M2. Otherwise, get a Urevo treadmill or the EgoFit M1 Pro. And I'll leave it to you to decide between the two, but I'd probably pick the Urevo. A couple of other random tips when you're using a walking desk is you're gonna want a standing desk to accommodate it, of course. I recommend the Flexi Spot. It's a very budget brand standing desk. It's a sit stand desk, so it's electric. It can go up and down with the push of a button. And it is very budget, very low cost compared to some of the other contenders out there like the Jarvis and whatnot. And for being budget, I mean, look at how much weight I am putting on this thing. This is a double station for me and my partner. So it's a load bearing desk for sure. I've got all these arms back there, okay? So by budget, it is not cheap. So I recommend the Flexi Spot standing desk sit stand. It's important that you get a sit stand desk because previously I was trying to come up with standing solutions for when I wasn't walking. And I had these wobble boards. There's something called the Fluence, Fluid Stance Plane Cloud. Or I might switch to a stepper, the mini stepper called the Sizer. I do not recommend this anymore because over time I have found that it's actually pretty hard on your knees. It's a really incredible device. It is so durable. It will never break. It doesn't take electricity. It's cheaper than the, than the Ego Fit. So all in all, it sounds like it would be a better solution for fitness desk. However, it's really hard on your knees. The up and down stair stepping motion for eight hours a day is a lot more detrimental on your knee health than the Ego Fit. So for your knees, I would recommend sticking to a treadmill when it comes to the fitness desk. And when you're not walking, you should be sitting. So you should go down to sitting mode when you're not walking. Take this guy, roll it up, put it up against the wall, vertical, and then bring in a chair and sit down. So like I said previously, I was trying to walk half the time and then stand half the time. And that was just, if you're not doing the, the real deal, you should be giving your knees a break. So you should be sitting or walking. So tip number one is get a standing desk, of course, a sit stand desk, which is electric. I recommend the flexi spot. Tip number two is walk or sit and nothing in between. Tip number three, these little cheapy $6 fingerless gloves. And the reason is if you're walking more than even, you know, one mile an hour, you're going to be building up a sweat and you don't want that sweat to drip on your mouse or keyboard. So you'll want these little cheapy fingerless gloves for when you're walking fast. I tend to walk 3.1 miles per hour on average when I'm working. It's fairly rigorous and I definitely build up a sweat. So I want these to capture that so that I don't ruin my electronics. Tip number four is going to be because you're walking, you're building up static electricity, static electricity, and it's going to transfer from your fingertips to anything that's metal. So try to switch from a metal mouse or keyboard. Some keyboards are metal or at least have easily touched metal components to something which is plastic. So this is the Slim Blade Pro. I'm obsessed with it. It's my favorite mouse in the world. This is the Mistel Barocco MD770. It's not my favorite keyboard in the world, but it's a dang good budget pick. Both of these are plastic for the majority of their components with, of course, metal and electronics contained within. And the reason that you want to be touching plastic is that you don't want to transfer static electricity to your electrical components, which can then damage your components. And even worse, it can send the electric up to your computer. And what happens often is if I end up accidentally touching like one of the screws on this guy, there it is, and I accidentally touch that, the screens will flicker due to a transfer of the ESD to the computer and the transfer of the current connection to the monitors. And that just is very concerning. Nothing's ever happened to my laptop, luckily. No sort of damage has occurred, but I don't trust that over time. Alternatively, you can get something called an ESD wrist strap, an electrostatic discharge wrist strap, which you wrap around your wrist and you pin it to something metal. I don't really have anything I could pin it to here, but it will continuously channel the ESD out of your body and into the metal current so that you can continue interacting with any sort of metal that you have to interact with at your station. And the last tip is to have good ergonomics of the devices you're using to interact with. So you want good monitor arms, arms that position your monitors just so, so that you're looking straight on against your workstation. So you want your head to be perfectly perpendicular to the walking surface. You want to be looking straight forward. And that is best accommodated by monitor arms rather than monitor stands, traditional monitor stands. And the other benefit of monitor arms is that they allow you to fit more monitors within a cluster and free up some desk space. 
So that's the ergonomics on your sort of neck and shoulders side of thing is getting monitor arms to position your monitors just right for viewing ergonomics. And then on the hand side of ergonomics, you want a split mechanical keyboard, tented ideally, and a trackball mouse. And the reason an ergonomic mouse and keyboard is so important with a walking desk more than usual is that as you're walking up and down and back and forth, and there's all sorts of jostling motion, the thing that creates a lot of the problems with wrists and thumb joints that people experience that end up moving towards ergonomic solutions. The, the, the problems like repetitive stress injury, RSI, or carpal tunnel syndrome are created primarily by the back and forth motion of your joints. So if you were to use a traditional mouse, this is not a traditional mouse, this is a trackball, but pretend it is, that sort of motion in the wrist creates over time through too much usage, RSI, of the wrist or the thumb or whatnot. And so when you're at a walking desk, that motion is exacerbated. It is amplified and exaggerated because you're going up and down and back and forth and wrist motion and joint motion is happening even more than if you were sitting still. So you want to compensate for the difference by jumping to real ergonomic end game that you might have jumped to anyway. You got you to get there sooner if you're at a walking desk than if you were sitting because that kind of motion that can lead to RSI is amplified. So I recommend the Slim Blade Pro on the mouse side of an ergonomic trackball mouse. Trackballs are really the, the end game in ergonomics for mice. I have a whole video covering mice and keyboard. And I rec recommend actually not this. If you have the money, it's called the Glove 80. It's about $400. It's quite expensive. This is $100. So the Glove 80 is $400. You're not looking at the Glove 80 right here. This is called the Mistel Barocco MD770. It was about $120. But find yourself a good ergonomic trackball mouse and a split mechanical keyboard with tenting. Tenting means it is angled as steep of an angle as you can possibly get it. So those are my tips. One is get a sit-stand desk. Two is only walk or sit. Try not to stand if you can. Three is fingerless gloves so you don't get sweat on your electronics. Four is plastic electronics so you don't transfer electricity to your electronics. I don't know if I've got the count right, but anyway, five is ergonomics, both at the neck and shoulders side of things with monitor arms and at the wrist and joints side of things with trackball mice and split mechanical keyboards.